ACC Wednesday night doubleheader continues right down the road in Raleigh. Debbie Antonelli, Jay Alter with you. The red hot NC State Wolfpack taking on Florida State. This NC State team 6 and 1 in the month of January. And it, the calendar might have flipped to February, Debbie, but this is one of the best teams in the conference right now. Well, Traquavion Smith is hot. He's already hit two triples. Going for a third. Left it short, but there to clean up the spill. Greg Gant can't finish it. Cam Corrin dispossessed by DJ Burns. He's doing everything right now for the Wolfpack. DJ just looking at us over here, giving us a uh-uh. He's like, no way. Good hands inside. DJ Burns doing a great job. They're trying to isolate him on the block. Obviously, defensively, they want to try to attack him. You want to try to put him in ball screen action. I'm telling you, he's done a good job staying out of foul trouble. Everybody talking about the scoring is for good reason coming off a career high 31, but he impacts the game in so many different ways. Now, this is a very talented NC State team. They've won six out of seven. What's been the biggest key during that stretch? I think the guard play has been outstanding, but the improvement and the emergence of DJ Burns, look what he's done in the last three games, 21 points and five boards. 31 in his last outing at Wake, 23 of those in the second half. Wide open three, Casey Morsell makes the Seminoles pay. It's a 12-0 run for the Wolfpack. That's three triples in that 12-0 run. Scoop to the hoop, Matthew Cleveland, he has all four for Florida State. And here's the full court pressure. And this is where I think NC State's not just trying to beat the press, and not turn it over. And NC State doesn't turn the ball over very often. They're looking to attack this pressure. Jarkel Joyner through traffic. Count it, plus the foul. Well, Florida State is going to switch one through five. And when the guards for the Wolfpack get a big on them, like Corrin right here, that's just a foot speed matchup that is hard for Cameron Corrin to stay with. He's 6'10", Jarkel Joyner 6'1", and explosive with that first step. And this right here, Jay, is why I think this is gonna be a high scoring game because the court's gonna open up. Both teams like to press. Both teams like the up-tempo. Florida State's coming off a game against Clemson in which they made 13 threes. Couldn't come up with the win, but if they can bring that shooting form on the road, they've got a shot to them. And this is exactly a replica for Leonard Hamilton with the way the game started Saturday night. Clemson got out to a big lead, hit a bunch of threes, and then Florida State chips away and is leading at halftime against the Clemson Tigers on Saturday. Should have won that game. They had a chance to win it, that's for sure. Cleveland. Contested shot, too much on it. It'll be NC State when we come back with the basketball. Kevin Keats team shot out of a cannon here at home where they played so well. 11 and 1 in this building on the season, and they're up 11 to start. NC State dialed in from deep early. Well, their cross court skip. DJ Burns with a vision to, to Quavion Smith in the corner. How about driving your defender back to create some separation and then the pass out to Casey Morsell. Three of four outside the arc for NC State to start the basketball game. And you look at Terquavion Smith against the Seminoles in the last two meetings, averaging 26 and a half points a game, shooting 50%. He's right on schedule, made his first two shots and they were both from three. I think Jarkel Joyner is a one-man press breaker. He doesn't need a screen. He doesn't need any help. Here's Burns after a career-high 31 in the win against Wake Forest over the weekend. He's a fan favorite, and you can see why. I mean, he's taking the freshman down to the block, and he just spins so quickly. Florida State, they 
dug themselves an early hole. Down by 13. Here's Baba Miller into the game. He can't connect. Baba Miller is a player to keep your eye on. Number 11 for Florida State. 6'11". Very talented. Burns wants it. Cleveland fronting him. Now gets it. Backing Cleveland down to the spin cycle. Comes up empty, but there's a foul for a shove in the back on the ensuing rebound. There's Kevin Keats, head coach of the Wolfpack. Six and one in January. He's put his team in a terrific position to make their way back to the NCAA tournament this season. I mean, he's done a heck of a job. NC State's receiving votes in the AP poll. They only won 11 games last year. 17 wins right now. They've been excellent in this building. 11 and one at home. DJ just says, clear it out. He's got no one else on that side of the floor with him. Kick to the corner, great pump fake. And then the three, Jarkel Joyner drills him. I mean, right now, NC State's getting whatever they want offensively. And you know what? Greg Gant doesn't get enough credit, Jay, but he's a perfect complement to DJ on the block. He doesn't need the ball. He's a great offensive rebounder. Florida State in the danger zone right now. The Wolfpack on a 20-2 run over the last five minutes. Right back to Burns. That's three straight possessions. He's been the initiator, and he drives right in and draws the foul. Wake Forest did not bring a double. DJ Burns had 31. And he gets to the middle. Look at how many Florida State jerseys are sucked into the paint on DJ Burns. Barkley, 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 which is back it down, back it down, back it down. <laughs> they all get sucked to the paint, and he's has such a high IQ with the ball in his hands. Timeout, Florida State. DJ Burns at NC State rolling right now, up six. You know, what's funny and a little bit surprising about the start to this game is you look at Florida State and their last two ACC road games, they went on the road and won at Notre Dame and at Pittsburgh. And that's a really good Pittsburgh team that Leonard Hamilton squad beat. And they've looked like they've improved so much since the poor start to the season, and yet down by 17 now early. Well, it's 21 years at Florida State, but it's a 50-year career coaching young men in our game. And you can't count Leonard Hamilton's team out because they can get hot in a hurry. They can shoot the three. They made 13, as you mentioned earlier in that Clemson game. What adjustments they, do they have to make here? Well, you gotta, you gotta get some stops defensively, first of all, and then you gotta be able to score on the other end. They have struggled to find good shots against NC State's defense, which has been equally as intense as their offense early on. Suffocating right now. Leonard Hamilton received that pass and he didn't want to. Coach Hamilton looking spelt over there. He's on a fasting diet. Looks fantastic. Doesn't feel so good. Doesn't feel good right now, but he looks good. Shot clock on eight. Joiner splits the double. Right to the rim. DJ Burns tipped it in, and NC State leads by 20. Does DJ look a little more nimble tonight, like light on his feet? <laughs> He's very active on both ends. Everybody locking down one pass away. Cleveland, another contested shot off the mark. Florida State has missed their last five. Maybe they can get something in transition. Cleveland oh. had numbers. Worley's there, swatted away. Up to Burns. And now Turquavion Smith has it. That 
that time, really nice job by the Seminoles to get in and double burn before he could pass it. Well, just because you have a 20-point lead doesn't mean you start becoming loose with the basketball. Look at this drive and DJ with the follow. Burns checks out. Wolfpack right now on a 24-2 run over the last seven minutes. Tom House into the game, lost his footing. An excellent three-point shooter. That's what they need right now, down 20. Casey Morsell called for the foul. NC State shooting 57% from the floor, 80% from the three-point line. Florida State just two of 11. Looking for something, anything to ignite this offense, and they turn it over. Another steal. Joyner with great explosion, backs up, hits it. Jarkel Joyner, and it's a 23-point lead for the Wolfpack. Wow. Get the timeout before the five-second count. Florida State. Scoreless for the last five minutes, and it's allowed the Wolf Pack to blow this game wide open. NC State flying all over the court. Jarkel Joyner puts pressure on the D, then steps back behind the three. Terrific start by the Pack. Jay Alter, Debbie Antonelli with you. So Florida State scored the first basket of the game, and since then, NC State proceeded to go on a 27-2 run. You don't see that very often. Well, Matthew Cleveland is the only player that has made a basket. Florida State has not been to the free throw line, and those four turnovers have resulted in 11 NC State points. If you turn it over against the Wolfpack, their team speed's going the other way. It's gonna be really tough to catch them. Chandler Jackson, he misses. Florida State now shooting two of 12 from the floor. You know, we're talking all about NC State making five threes tonight and scoring, shooting the ball so well. The defense equally impressive, four points in nine minutes. They've given up two baskets in nine minutes. Offensive rebound, Smith keeps it alive. He's tripped up. I mean, what's more impressive, the, the 27 points or holding Florida State to four? Jay, come on now, we've worked together long enough. You know I see going the game deep. through an offense. No, I'm going all, Off all the way. Oh. I see the game through an offensive <laughs> lens, man. That I do. 27 points in nine minutes yeah. is equally as impressive as holding a team to only two baskets. Catch and shoot. That's the type of night it's been for NC State. Wolfpack now shooting six of seven from three. Traquavion Smith just made his third. <laughs> Tough take, and that's exactly what Florida State needed. Ends a six-minute scoring drop. Deontay Green high off the glass against NC State's Duana. Quavion Smith. Eyes on the timer. Five seconds to shoot. Pulls up from deep. Back to back threes. His fourth in this first half. To Quavion, you go ahead and shoot till your arm falls off. Wow. You talk about hot. Could he be the ACC player of the year? He could be, yes. He's certainly in the conversation. You lead this league in scoring, you make the kind of improvement that he's made along with the team, definitely in the conversation. The defense, too. Everything but the finish. 
Curtis Ross trying to rip the rim off. All smiles after the missed dunk. I mean, he's going from the ground to the rim. He didn't even dribble. But that's how athletic he is. In many ways, this NC State team reminds Leonard Hamilton of what his Florida State teams are, are usually. Elite athleticism, depth, they're going to press you, they're going to play you 40 minutes. Kevin Keats using the Leonard Hamilton blueprint. Well, Leonard Hamilton has been playing this way for 10 years. I asked him how long he's been switching one through five. He said he always wanted to play this way, and, and now he has the athletes to do it. Now, he has four guys playing 30-plus minutes a game. That never happens. Usually they have more depth, but they don't have the same kind of depth that they've had in years past. And they don't have a lot of veteran guys that understand the culture, the work ethic, the system, how hard you have to compete every day in practice. And you have a bunch of young guys, and you don't have any older guys to set that level. It's hard to, to yo, yo, yo. explain it. This is a player-led program for Leonard Hamilton. It's always been that way. Thursday night, tomorrow night, women's basketball doubleheader right here on ACC Network. It starts with Pittsburgh against number 16, Duke, and then NC State and Georgia Tech in your nightcap at 8. Burns, great feed. Ernest Ross, the finish. I mean, this is as comfortable as I've seen DJ. He's telling Corn to bring it in. He's giving him this. This team's just playing with so much confidence right now. Coast to coast, Burns again! He's everywhere! He's just messing with him, right? He's doing a little talking, he's doing a little antics. Burns. I mean, Jay, look at this. This is how comfortable it is for DJ. Great find inside. And then he's saying, come on, bring it. Bring it, freshman. Well, there is no better player to watch in college basketball right now than a, from a pure entertainment standpoint. And even on social media, DJ Burns hyping up the home crowd. Pack Nation, invite your cousin, son, his best friend, then says, Kids, tell your favorite teacher. Well, today before the game, <laughs> he decided to get grandma involved. Did you remind to tell granny and all her friends at the bingo hall to, to come out? Oh, I love it. He's fun to watch on and off the court. He's just a great personality. And, and he's having fun playing college basketball. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Had a career high 31 points against Wake Forest over the weekend as well, eight points tonight and has done so much more I mean, than score. What about a triple-double watch for DJ one of these days, right? I mean, he's got eight points, three boards, three assists. Heads up. No turnovers. Such an underrated passer. Oh, I think he's well-respected as a passer. I think that's part of the reason why Steve Forbes at Wake Forest decided not to play him with a double team. He had enough size, he thought to stand him up one-on-one. -on -one. Leonard Hamilton said he passes like a point guard. He sees the floor like that. Ice and ball screens, trying to keep the ball on the same side of the floor. Mills does a great job of setting up Worley in the corner. It's a really good play by Caleb Mills. You can ice, but you can't let them split. They only counted it as a two. Foot might have been on the line. I'm sure they'll take a look at it. Breon passes to the game for the Wolfpack. Step back. Off the mark. 
See, just because you got a big on the switch doesn't mean you should be taking that shot. Cleveland right to the rim, rejected. Ernest Raw sends off Smith. Hey. Bounces out to Joyner. He pulls the trigger. Can't connect. Another offensive rebound. Maybe third time's the charm here. Smith. Oh, he is scorching. Terquavion Smith buries his fifth three of this first half. Fourteen minutes of game action and a 30-point lead for the Wolfpack. Back-to-back oh. -back really good plays by Caleb Mills. Another offensive rebound, and Florida State not organized, and really no sense of urgency right there. Coach Hamilton do, is not going to like that. Six days from now, our Tuesday night college basketball doubleheader right here on ACC Network starts in Pittsburgh where Jeff Capel's team is red hot, three in a row, including tonight in Chapel Hill and then NC State, Virginia. That is going to be a big time matchup at 9 Eastern. Great doubleheader on Tuesday. Every night, it is so hard to win in this league. Joe Blinardi has seven teams projected into the NCAA tournament. And I think it could easily be eight. I, I think so. There's so much basketball left to play in February. When you play in a competitive power league like this, every night you're playing for the NCAA tournament. Shot clock down to three. Smith fouled with the shot clock under two. Terquavion Smith will get three at the line. Debbie, great point about how difficult it is to win in this league. The good news on that is great opportunity to get resume wins. A lot of quad ones, a lot of quad twos in this league. Right, take a look right here. This is what NC State has coming up, and these numbers can change, but right now, Georgia Tech is in the four. They got a great opportunity with Virginia. And a lot of twos. I mean, your, your last five games are all two or one. Yeah, and plus you already have a win over Duke. And North Carolina's got to come in here. You have a win over Wake Forest. They have to come here. to stay yet to find their rhythm. Mills draws the foul, leaned into Burns. That's DJ's second. Still smiling though. Every Thursday, right after our double header, nothing but net will break down everything you need to know in ACC women's hoops, highlights, analysis of every single women's game, and look ahead at the best games coming up over the weekend. ACC Network Thursday night, all about women's hoops. Who's the best team on the women's side in the ACC? Well, right now, Jay Duke and Notre Dame are tied for first in the league. NC State is playing well, and North Carolina has won seven in a row. There are, like the men, there are a lot of good teams on the women's side. Projected eight teams in the NCAA tournament right now. Nothing but the bottom of the net, Greg Gant, and he's not a three-point shooter. NC State has made nine threes of this first half, shooting 75%. That's just Gant's second triple of the season. And once again, Caleb Mills, I think that's four consecutive plays that he has made up the floor for Florida State. So he's still balling. I'm 
going to go back after we take the another look at the Mills and one. Again, NC State icing the ball screen, and the screener's defender has given up way too much space. They don't want to stay attached, but you've got to be able to keep him on one side of the floor. That's why you're icing the ball screen. NC State, 9 of 12 from 3. 75%. I've never seen that in a, in a first half of basketball. Gant hits it again. Back-to-back -back buckets for him. The last five games, Greg Gant coming into this one had 14 points and 42 rebounds. That's his job. Yeah. And 13 of those were on the offensive end. And now look, it's the second time he's gotten a deflection at midcourt to get the ball back to the Wolfpack. I mean, he is really starring in his role. And if he scores, that's a bonus for NC State. What's incredible is NC State is up by 29, and they're playing like it's tied. Well, you don't look at the scoreboard now. You know, you're still trying to play at maximum effort, and certainly Florida State is trying just to chip away, right? It's a, it's a daunting task right now. Put on the gas. Smith from NBA range off the mark. The fans will forgive him, though. Five of six from three before that miss. Gant looks like he banged his elbow, but pops up, looks just fine. We'll step aside, we'll pack up big. Hey, guess who's in the house? Jim Phillips, ACC commissioner. He did the doubleheader tonight. He was down in Chapel Hill for the first half of North Carolina Pittsburgh, then made the 25 minute drive to PNC Arena. Five games this week, home games for every single football team, and he's at every single championship. I, this guy, he lives on the road. He gets around to see every coach. He's been here in the Triangle for a couple of days. And then this, today is National Girls and Women in Sports Day, and while we're talking about the commissioner, his daughter is a soccer player at Yale, and so, He's very supportive of women's athletics, and I know the coaches in the ACC really appreciate that. I wonder if Jim Phillips, while he was over at Chapel Hill, met with UNC Field Hockey's brand new head coach, the 22-year-old Aaron Madsen. How about that? Incredible hire. How interesting. Well, I'm sure Bubba Cunningham, the athletic director, vetted it out pretty well. And I mean, she's 22. Can she rent a car when she's recruiting on the road? <laughs> she might need to call an Uber. <laughs> No, it was great chatting with Jim Phillips, though, pregame. He made a point to us. I want to get out and, and talk to as many coaches as possible. So from Florida State's in town, great opportunity for him. He said he spent some time with Leonard Hamilton, spent time with Jeff Capel yeah. before the Carolina game. You know, if you're a student athlete in this league, i got to believe that his door is open. I certainly know that's the way Boo Corrigan operates at NC State. He's the athletic director here. It's great to talk with him pregame. Yes, as well. got to visit with him as well. It was fun sitting over here pregame. We yeah, almost... well, you're the mayor. A hundred, no, no. 180 people come up to you. We need security detail for Debbie Antonelli in Raleigh. And security underneath the basket with a nice block. It's been a winds are few and far between for Florida State tonight. That rims out from Green, but great follow from Camp Corrin. And Corrin's tugging on his jersey, which is the universal symbol for get me out, I'm tired, or I've gone as hard as I can go, give me a break, which I think it's the latter with Leonard, ha Leonard Hamilton's players. Travion Smith lost the handle. He wanted a foul, didn't get it. Mills. He has kept attacking. Stays down after the miss. Hey, 
Wolfpack yeah. had numbers, couldn't yeah. finish. Can't stay inactive. This is the kind of up and down I expected. Up top, Cam Corrin. Kevin Keats calls a timeout. He's not happy with the transition defense. Step inside for 30 seconds. Well, you would never know the score by looking at the NC State huddle. I think it's a great timeout. It's a focus thing. It's not about this game, it's about the season. Kevin Keats sees a wider vision for his team. When you have the season they have last year with the adversity, the injuries, and you're not winning, and then you got a chance like this with this group, you better keep your focus for 40 minutes where it needs to be and not worry about what the scoreboard says. Kevin knows what it takes. He's won championships before at Hargrove Military Academy. Twice he's been coach of the year in the Colonial. He's taken UNC Wilmington to the tournament. He's taken NC State to the tournament. And he could very well be back in the tournament this season. Well on their way to 18 and 5 and 8 and 4 in league play. Jay, we don't know what's in the net. We don't know how they calculate. Efficiency. But use your eyes. This is a tournament. Yes, and, and when you look at the score, we don't know if the margin of victory matters. I tend to think it does. Oh my God, no. well, this is now four possessions in a row where NC State has gone scoreless. They've missed their last five shots in a scoring crowd of three minutes, and I think that's what's irritating Kevin Keats. You're sure, you're up by 23, but you want to see that consistency. Did you see the comeback the other night in the Iowa State game? That was incredible. No game is over. Full court pass. Worley picks it up, puts it in. And that's a good call by Leonard Hamilton. Throw over the top when you know that Kevin Keats just called a timeout to get into his guys about not getting back. So you know they're going to be over aggressive, over playing. And you try to find something over the top or back door. Well, don't look now. Florida State on an 8 nothing run. Joyner trying to end it. Camp. Cleveland just gives it away. Up ahead. Chased down by Thomas. Lays it up and in. Plus the foul. I mean, really good D by Casey Morsell. Almost a gift. LJ Thomas at the line. Freshman out of Florida. Big part of this depth that Kevin Keats is so proud of with this team this season. And you know, I was at practice this morning with Kevin Keats when they were going through their scout and getting ready for this game. I mean, they were locked in. The guys were locked in. Coach Keats and his staff were locked in. It's February, Jay. It's time. After a terrific January where the Wolfpack went 6-1. and one. Couldn't ask for a better month. And now trying to keep it going as the calendar flips to February. They certainly have in this first half. Shot clock down to five. Chandler Jackson has to hurry into a double team. Cleveland can't connect from three. Florida State will get one last chance with under two seconds left in the half. Got to look for the lob play here. Look for Caleb Mills, number four. Looking for Mills and set into Worley. Tough angle and it goes down. The victories were few and far between in this first half by Florida State, but they end it on a 10 to two run. NC State shot out of a cannon to start this game. DJ Burns and company, a 49-27 advantage. Let's get you into the studio. Down with Cuff, Jordan Cornette. We'll have you covered. Jay Alter, thank you very much. That's Dallin Cuff. I'm Jordan Cornette, and that was Wolfpack. They are dangerous. 
Mm-hmm. Shout out to McCannon. I heard Jay say a few times that's absolutely accurate as they are rolling 49-27 over Florida State. Quickly, your thoughts on what you saw in the first half. This team, we've said it, this team is a tournament team. Yep. This, this team is a team you're not going to want to see in the tournament with those nope. two guards with Smith and, and Joyner and the dancing bear with the big feet and, and DJ Burns, the interior, the great hands. That, that said, I think Debbie made a great point when, when Coach Keats kind of read him the riot act there. This isn't about tonight. Mm-hmm. It's about where this team wants to go. And they are, there are games you cannot lose in this league. Florida State at home is one of them, and they came out and dominated 19 minutes and 30 seconds, if you will. He doesn't want any slippage. I like it. I saw DJ Burns back the basketball down from the three-point line. It's incredible. I just love to see those kind of plays. That kid is gifted. That team is talented. Yeah. They can go a long way. Big night for Jalen Withers in the victory. Coach Payne gets his first conference win. Withers finishes with 19 to Quavion Smith. Doing what the first round talent does. All back in that first half. We still got 20 minutes left here on the ACC Network. NC State has built a big lead, though, 49-27 over Florida State. Don't count the Seminoles out, though. They can still make some threes. But, Debbie, if that first half goes NC State's way, or the second half goes like it did in the first, this is all NC State. Yeah, NC State came out ready to play, and they were on fire from three. DJ Burns got the scoring started, though by getting the ball inside and then working through the paint. Here he is going one-on-one against the rookie Corin. And then nice ball fake and good job by Ross getting behind the defense. But it was a Turquavion Smith show in the first half. What an offensive performance he put on display. Five triples in the first half for Turquavion. 16 points for Smith to lead the way for NC State. And and you touched on it, Debbie, but as impressive as the offensive performance was, the defensive intensity from the Wolfpack really stood out as well. Well, I I thought when you hold a team like Florida State that has the kind of athleticism that they have to four field goals and nine minutes of play, or two field goals and nine minutes of play, that's impressive. I thought their intensity was equal on both ends. Until the very end when Kevin Keats called a timeout and told they need to get back in transition in a very matter-of-fact way. Now Florida State did end the first half on a 10-2 run, and they picked up where they left off. Still a big mountain to climb, down 20, but down but not out. See, great scripted play coming out of the locker room by Leonard Hamilton. Exactly what we were talking about in the first half, Jay. You know NC State is going to push up and be aggressive. They're going to bring the heat and keep the pressure on the ball. It's a perfect time to ball fake and go back door. Burns backing his man down off the window and in. It's not just that he's skilled with that half hook. It's that he knows where he is on the floor. It's so important for post players to understand the real estate that they're playing in. That's why he can use the glass so well. And now on the defensive end, up ahead. Joiner, sky high, but Rost mistimed it. Give and go, Cleveland right into Burns, and they call Burns for the foul. Burns thought he was straight up. So it's the lob and the missed two-point opportunity, and now you're playing in transition. Now look right here, Burns off the glass. You can't guard that. No, you cannot. Leonard Hamilton called DJ Burns unguardable. And in many ways he is. If you let him catch the ball, Florida State's plan tonight was to front him as much as possible. He's bigger than anyone else that (laughs) Florida State has. And he knows how to use his body for leverage. Looks like an offensive lineman, but to be confused as a quarterback. He's so nimble at times and a great passer too. I think you have to have IQ and he definitely has it. I mean, he sees the game like that. Mills goes right by Burns, lays it up and in. Well, Kevin Keats is trusting him right here because there's nobody at the scorer's table to come in for him with those three fouls. And they're driving right at him, Florida State is. It's turned to drive, floater, too much on it. Burns trying to track it down, and he does. How about the hustle from Burns? That's why he's a fan favorite. 
plays like that. Now can the Wolfpack cash in to Burns. Cross-court pass for Sell. Got a great look. You know, when he passes out of that double or he skips it across the floor, he gives his shooters confidence. He wants to check that assist box. Florida State fell down in that first half, but they are playing motivated right now. They have not given up on this game. And they're basically doing this without their one of their better offensive players, Darren Green, who's 0 for 2 and has not scored in the game yet. He's going to get hot. Making this run is what I mean. Morsell through contact. Offensive foul going the other way. Green that time doing it on defense. They go two side right here. Mills gets to the inside and scores. And then this play right here is a two side. So NC nice. State's largest lead was 30. Florida State has chopped it down to an 18-point lead. Corrin lost the handle, stays with the Seminoles. They're going right at DJ. Corrin is trying. DJ's been talking to him all game. between Worley and Mills. That's a turnover. NC State leads the ACC in turnover margin, plus four. That would be ten turnovers for Florida State so far, Jay. They're plus six tonight, and they've turned turnovers into 16 points off of those turnovers. That's the style of play that Kevin Keats prides this program on. Smith in the lane, that's a tough take and he gets it to go. And that's where Kirk Le'Veon has gotten so much better. He's so bouncy, he's got great spring. He's shown that he can score one-on-one. -on -one. Cleveland went right at Burns again. That's been the game plan this entire second half. Well, Coach Keats is mad, not at DJ, but at the guards for not keeping the ball in front. He's going to no, have to come out of yeah, this Yeah, all you do is put that kind of pressure on DJ on the back row, right? <laughs> he just looked at a replay at the video board. I, I think it's a foul. DJ's acting surprised, but he, he, he gets him on the arm. Clearly gets him on the arm right there. And that's an easy call. So in comes Ebenezer Duana. Burns is going to have to sit for a long time with four yeah. fouls. But the point is, is that the, the guards have to keep the ball in front and not allow that kind of penetration to the rim, putting DJ in that situation, especially with three fouls. But all the time. Rejected at the rim. Up ahead, Cleveland. Out of balance. And it's going to be NC State ball. Chandler Jackson called for the shove as Cleveland shaken up underneath his own hoop. Well, Florida State's double-double machine, Matthew Cleveland, going back to the locker room during the break. This is what happened in transition. Comes down awkwardly on that right leg. immediately grabs the right knee. But during the break, he went back, got checked down, and has immediately come back onto the bench. So that's encouraging. Yeah. I mean, Matthew Cleveland is a competitor, right? He played 36 minutes a game in Leonard Hamilton's system. Last year, he was the ACC Sixth Man of the Year, and he's had 15 consecutive double-figure games for Florida State. He's definitely been their leader. This team's not used to playing with him off the floor. Smith gets that second gear. 
He took Quavion so good, snaking behind that ball screen. Engaging the second lever, level. That acceleration, too, he slows you down and then immediately hits the gas. Change of speed. It's incredible quickness in the backcourt for Kevin Keats. Tomorrow night, right here on ACC Network, a terrific women's basketball doubleheader. It starts with Pittsburgh and Duke at 6 Eastern, and then NC State, number 15 team in the country, taking on Georgia Tech. Wes Moore and NC State, two wins over top 10 teams, including the Sunday night victory at home over Notre Dame. I asked you earlier who, who's the best team in the ACC on the women's side, and you said it's wide open, much like the men's side. Yep, uh, it's wide open. I mean, it's a battle on the men's side and women's side for the top four seeds in the ACC tournament to get that double bye. It's going to matter. Oh! Green just hit a three. I think it bounced off the head of Cam Corrin, and it bounced perfectly for a Florida State triple. I said earlier, Darren Green needed to get going. He can really fill it up. minutes into this second half, the tempo has certainly increased. Here's Green, he can get hot in a hurry. Jackson inverted to the block, oh. That's a goal time. So take another look at this. Full court pass, Cam Corrin, like a safety who's beat, just flings his hands up and then Green hits the three. That's a unique play. Like a DB, right? Is yeah. that what you said? Like yeah. going, got to turn and look for the ball, though. You think you've seen everything in basketball. I've never seen something like that. <laughs> hey, it's a 17-point game. It is. How about the fight in Florida State? It was a 30-point game. With six minutes left in the first half, everybody thinks NC State's just gonna walk their way to a victory and Florida State's making them earn it. Smith calling for the clear out, has the mismatch. Working on Baba Miller, the freshman, Jackson comes in. It is called for a foul. Leonard Hamilton can't believe it, Chandler Jackson can't believe it. Quavion is shaking off that left wrist that's already taped. So did he get wrist or ball? I think Jackson was looking for a jump ball there. I think it's the right call. Got him on the wrist first, you're saying? Yes. Down. Puts Miller on the court and lays it up and in for two. Great dunk down low. Cam Corn. Tell you what. It's getting a nice attack. I mean, Cam Corrin, Jay, he has played well. Now that DJ Burns isn't out there to push him around. Smith pull up, pop, the immediate answer. And DJ Burns pushes everybody around, so it's not just Cam Corrin. Boy, Jackson drives right into the chest of Ross. Or Duana, excuse me. Florida State's game plan in this second half, Debbie, has just been getting right to the rim. Everything's inside. Well, they only shot five free throws in the first half. And they need to get to the line. It's part of chipping away when you're trailing by so many. They're not turning the ball over. They're getting to the free throw line.
Good sight to see Matthew Cleveland checking back into the game for Florida State after he went down a few minutes ago. It's great to see Matthew back on the floor. And this young man, Chandler Jackson, the first 13 games, 21 points. The last six coming into this one, 31 points. So he's starting to come on, adding to that depth that Leonard Hamilton desperately is looking for with his team. And he played a career-high 19 minutes against Clemson in the last game. Smith. Oh! Count it plus the foul. That is what you call the blow-by. I mean, goodbye to the rim. Hard to stay in front of NC State's guards. NC State has made their last four shots. The last two belong to Terquavion Smith. And with that made free throw, he's got 25. Greg Gant switches hips around. Quick release from Green off the mark though. NC State regaining control of this game. They've made four straight. Bob Miller just has to keep Joyner in front. Give him a cushion. You bring that screen, you expect that switch. Step back. Joyner beats the freshman. I mean, that's just really good offense. Burns is loving it on the bench. Full court pass. Green. Skying and scoring. What a pass. Yeah. I bet Darren Green's sister, Dalen, is loving that. She's at home watching. Cleveland. Florida State's been successful when they can get in transition. Green step back. He's made two in a row now. One of their leading scorers at 14 points a game. The Quavion Smith saying, just get out of the way. I'm going one on one here. He's used that mismatch in the second half. Smith already at 25 to lead the Wolfpack on the night. Well, and you can see Baba Miller going, come on, I got to guard these guards from NC State all night? Are you kidding me? Joyner and Smith. Green with a dunk in transition. A great pass over the top by Miller. Well, the calendar flips to February, and now everybody more dialed in on bracketology. So let's check in with Joe Lenardi as it relates to the Wolfpack. He's got them as a projected eight seed, and I'm not a bracketologist. I don't pretend to be Debbie, but looking at the eye tests, I think they're better than an eight seed. Yeah, I, I mean, there's so much basketball left to play, and they've won the games they're supposed to win, and they've stolen a couple along the way, and more opportunity as you advance the schedule in February. But here's where Joe has the ACC today. Now, this is a very fluid situation. It changes quite a bit. We usually get three emails a day from Joe. Joe's all over it. What stands out as you look at the ACC bid? Well, what stands out? Clemson is leading the oh, league in their nine seed. This league is really good. Virginia has some really good wins in early November. Of course, Duke is getting better, so they are definitely trending in the right direction. And Pittsburgh all the way at the bottom. Last four in, got a huge resume win tonight on the road at Chapel Hill. Two wins over North Carolina this year. Yeah, and actually, here's a, here might be, and this might be the best win. Virginia? 
Well, that was a fabulous we win. We did that we game. Did that that game. was fantastic. How about this? NC State is 11 and 1 in this building. The one loss, Pittsburgh. That's a good one. That was early, too. That's before everybody knew how good Pitt was, right? So you combine sweeping UNC, a great win against Virginia, and a win on the road here. How do you leave them out? I don't know what's in the net. It's one piece <laughs> of the criteria. Nobody does. Nobody does. I think it drives the coaches crazy, too. Not Joe Lenardi, though. He lives in. I'm old school. Bennett. I like the eye test. I like yeah, turning I on the tape. Tape doesn't lie. And it has not lied tonight. NC State and Jerquavion Smith shot out of a cannon. They built a 30-point lead. Credit Florida State, they battled, but this has been all wolf pack for the majority. You know, you're used to seeing Leonard Hamilton's teams with a bunch of seven footers over there, and they don't they just don't have them. I mean Naheem Cloud is home sick. He did not make the trip. Cameron Fletcher and Jalen Ganey out for the year with injury. It's been a tough go for Leonard Hamilton. Certainly not the team he thought he was going to have. Guys last year like Malik Osborne. He was one guy he thought he was going to have. Anthony Polite, John Butler, Raquan Evans. Both of these teams love full court pressure. They, they, they play very similar styles. It's just that one has the personnel this year, and Florida State just doesn't have the the roster makeup, especially when you factor all those injuries we were just talking about, to play the style Leonard Hamilton's accustomed to playing. Green trying to get the hands free, does. Clock down to five. Thomas spinning. Left it short. Good defensive possession by Florida State. Really locked in there. They've got a smaller lineup on the floor. Rolls off the rim, no good. Jump ball. Possession arrow with the wolf back. Are you surprised Florida State's not taking more threes? They've only attempted five on the night. I think NC State's defense has been really good. I don't think they've been able to get free. They can't get anything easy in transition. They've had one over the top dunk by Green. Now Leonard Hamilton went small, one possession, got a stop. Now he countered back with bringing a couple of bigs back in. Quavion Smith off the floor right now for Kevin Keats' team. Three seconds to shoot. Joyner hoists it. Too much on it. NC State has not made a field goal in the last three minutes. But they built a pretty comfortable cushion. And here comes Smith to give the offense a jolt. It has 26 on the night, seven shy of the season high 33. Nine Foul called on the follow sends Cam Corrin to the line. I'll tell you what, Cam Corrin is going to be a player in this system for Leonard Hamilton. 6'10", he's, he's a freshman. His dad played basketball at Georgia for Hugh Durham. He's already been Rookie of the Week one time in the ACC and 18 and 7 against Notre Dame. He's aggressive. And 
his off-season work and his face-up game is going to get better. He's already a very good athlete. You mentioned his father's two uncles played Power 5 football as well. Brian Corn at Georgia Tech and Ray Corn for Auburn under legendary coach Pat Dye. So that, that's a good bloodline. I mean, I know Coach Hamilton loves coaching them because he wants to be coached. Just a freshman, too. So much potential. This is a really young Florida State team. I mean, he's communicating all those switches, and he gets stuck on the way beyond Smith. Oh, it's now, his night. Not many can guard him. I'm watching Corrin defensively. And when you get to the end of the shot clock and you got Smith, it's like, oh, man. Come on. He's so quick and crafty, clever and creative, all of it together. Now up to 29, four shy of his season high, five shy of his career high. with an and one opportunity of his own. Do you see how low in the hips and shoulder game Baba Miller got turned in a corner? Look at this as a 6'11 guy. He looks like a 6'8 guy <laughs> dropping it off inside to 6'10. I mean, you gotta play the game low to high. When you do that, Jay, I'm telling you, he's gonna be, Baba Miller's gonna be special. Miller comes from Spain, played in the Real Madrid Academy from the age 14 onwards. He said he overlapped one year with Luca. Smith, step back three. Too much on it. Second chance opportunity, though, for the Wolfpack. I mean, look at Corrin denying Smith the basketball. Make somebody else score. Yeah, that rolls in for LJ Thomas. Somebody else did score. Cleveland lost his footing and a foul called. Brings us to our break. NC State up by 22. Oh, it's a sonic blockbuster, and college game day will be a Cameron indoor as well. Debbie Antonelli was there oh. last night. You left a note for Dan Schulman and Jay Bill. I did. Song. I left those guys a note. Boy, they're a great broadcasting team, and I know they're both going to have a lot of fun And Cameron. And Cameron is, was fun last night. It's always fun. It's going to be fun in there on Saturday. And look at the rivalry. That's 100 meetings squared at 50 apiece. You wrote it on the note, Jay Billis says it all the time, that game always delivers. Yes, Reese Davis uh, let everybody know that Jay was the first to coin that phrase, which I do agree with. It does deliver. You did the last meeting at Cameron yes. Indoor. It was Coach K's last home game, and it was the second viewing on the ACC Network. So we were up in the corner with Packer and Durham. It was a lot of fun. Here comes DJ Burns. Gets an ovation from the home crowd. He's such a fan favorite, and for good reason. He's been playing so well for this team. Playing with four fouls. That's limited his minutes tonight. Coming off that 31-point career-high performance. Well, you got to play through him while he's on the floor with those four fouls, right? He's only fouled out of one basketball game this season. Miscommunication, cap 
kicked out of bounds. So stays with NC State underneath their own hoop. Hoop scoop on DJ Burns. This guy plays seven instruments, including the saxophone pictured there. Saxophone, the alto sax. Not so much the tuba. Yeah, he said he gave up on the tuba. <laughs> How do you have the time as a Division I athlete to learn seven instruments? You know what? You, there's usually becomes a time in junior high and high school where they make you decide, right? You're either a yeah. band or you're an athlete. Well, who's going to make him decide, right? He can do whatever he wants. He's doing it all on and off the floor. He's been the X factor for this team, I would say. There's no question. He's vibrant in his personality. He's, he's definitely infected this crowd with fun, right? Forced Cam Corrin into turning it over there. Almost great body control from Smith to turn that in. This layups going back and forth. These two teams, high tempo, they've been running all night long. Transition defense seems optional at the moment. Well, you know, NC State has scored at such a high clip they can set their D, right? and they take care of the basketball. And we were looking at possessions during the break while DJ goes to the free throw line. NC State's only missed 30 shots and they've offensive rebounded 15 of them. That's an excellent offensive rebounding percentage. Six days from tonight, Tuesday doubleheader right here on ACC Network. It starts with Louisville and Pittsburgh, and then at 9 Eastern time, awesome matchup. Number six, Virginia, against a red-hot Wolfpack team, NC State, closing in on 18 and 5, 8 and 4 in league play, and a quad one opportunity against Virginia. Well, Tony Bennett's team has won six in a row. They are the hottest team in the league right now. And the favorites to win it, I would say. Right now, I think they're playing their best basketball. I think every team goes through some adversity. You just don't want to go through your adversity at the end of February. Virginia Tech's already had some with injury. NC State had some. To come out of January 6-1 and one when Kevin Keats had to reconfigure his roster a little bit based on injury. It's working on Corrin. Muscles at home, plus the foul. It's with great anticipation by this crowd. It is. They just cleared out. And that's the fifth foul on Cam Corrin. The freshman actually had a terrific night. Yes, he did. 16 points, too shy of his career high. Chant your name. That's pretty cool. Completes the and one. Yeah, Cam Corn had a really good game. I mean, it's not easy to keep DJ Burns in front, and all the switching, you get stuck on these NC State guards, and it's tough to keep them in front. That's a double ice bath game going against DJ Burns. You don't need one ice bath, you gotta have two. And his minutes have been limited. He's only been on the court for 18 minutes tonight, but he has 15 points, four rebounds, three assists. They're just clearing it out, trying to play two man game right here. Six on the shot. Joiner, step back three. That's the type of night it's been for NC State.
mark that time. And Smith is sitting on 29 points, wanted a touch on that possession, didn't get one. Deep three from Green. Miller keeps it in, but it goes to the Wolfpack. Rattles in! Six threes, 32 points for Turquavion Smith. And six threes ties his season high. What a night it's been for Turquavion Smith. We'll show you the highlights as he's getting high fives and he deserves it. Turquavion Smith, 32.6 threes. I mean, it's a beautiful stroke and he gets into the rhythm of his jumper in multiple ways. He's creative and crafty off the bounce. He can create separation. This is where his game has really improved, getting to the rim. He's not pulling up for the mid-range, he's getting all the way to the cup. He also leads NC State in assists. You can see what he has done in his career against Florida State. He likes that switching man to man. He's tore the Seminoles apart tonight, ties the season high for six made threes in a game, two points shy of his career high, 34. His night is done. I think he just continues to build his case for ACC Player of the Year. I definitely think he's in the conversation. Thomas comes in in place of Smith, and he knocks down a deep two. I think you got to look at what Armando Baycott has done at North Carolina as well. Oh, no doubt about it. Those will likely be the two names, though, as Green knocks down a three. That leads the list. Dark horse for me would be Jamarius Burton at Pitt. He's had a great season. Oh, he's the biggest reason why this Pitt team went from preseason number 14 to likely top five in the league with the potential to finish in the top four or three. They've got a favorable schedule down the stretch. Yeah, and NC State was picked to finish 10th in the yeah. league, right? And they're sitting in a good position right now should they move to eight and four. Uh, Our next All ACC, the ACC Life is a very special one and it premieres on Monday night. You don't want to miss this. An emotional journey with ACC student athletes and administrators from all 15 ACC schools who travel to Montgomery and Selma, Alabama to experience and learn more about the civil rights movement. Dallin Cuff hosts the coverage 7 Eastern right here on ACC Network. Of course, February 1st, Kicks off Black History Month, a fitting. ACC unites on Monday night. Well, Green's finally getting his hands free, and that's what he's capable of. Hasn't had many chances tonight, though. Dangerous, hardworking transfer from UCF. Averages three, three point makes a game. Pass step back three, nothing but the bottom of the net. NC State up by 30, and that three significant to some. Just a three-point shootout right now. Well, you nailed it with this was going to be a high-scoring, high-tempo game, but I, I doubt you thought the Wolfpack would get the 92. I was thinking it was going to be 85, 83, something like that. What's 
the ceiling for this NC State team? Well, I, I love the schedule, and you got to love the schedule I have coming up because they're definitely going to be tested. Quickness in the backcourt, depth emerging. Dushan Mahorchic on the horizon to return, as well as Jack Clark. That's the scary part. You, before those two went out, you could argue those were the two best big men for NC State in their absence. DJ Burns has now established himself. Ernest Ross has stepped up. Those guys come back healthy. The depth is just incredible. All right, number 41 for Florida State, RJ Morris. Watch for him to get a look. He will made every shot today in shoot around, which reminded me of Justin Linder, who was a yes. walk on for yes. Leonard Hamilton, who never missed in practice. They call themselves the green team. And Coach Hamilton puts a lot of stock in them helping develop his program and the team. There he is. The deepest backcourt. Oh, that's Van Hauer. Yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't Morris. The deepest scout team in all of college basketball, Leonard Hamilton's green team. All right, let's see if they give Morris a shot here. He's in the corner if they... Green didn't see him. The NC State goes wire to wire. A 27 to 2 run put them in comfortable position, and now the Wolf Pack improves to 18 and 5 and 8 and 4 in league play. What a finish for NC State! Quickness in the backcourt, depth off the bench. DJ Burns in the mix. It's a fun team to watch. 94 points is a big number against Florida State. That finishes our Wednesday night ACC doubleheader on ACC Network. For our terrific crew, Debbie Antonelli, I'm Jay Alter saying so long from Raleigh, NC State wins big.